Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this multiverse dimension shift effect. So some pretty interesting techniques involved here and we'll get started in just one second. First of all though I want to apologise for the audio quality. I'm banished from my studio for the time being and the sound is not going to be up to the usual quality so I apologise for that. But let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our source video and this comes from pexels.com and I'll just give you a link to it. So what we're going to do is file import as project and then we're going to navigate to the asset and import it. Now I want you to notice that I've converted it to ProRes and I strongly advise you to do that. It will definitely help with performance. So import as project and a click comes in and it's approximately 11 seconds long but we actually it's got a little bit of a kink in it just after eight seconds so what we're actually going to do is we're going to come over to the project settings and we're going to set the project duration to eight seconds. So let's do that. Time code eight seconds. And because we used import as project you'll notice that we've actually got 3840 by 2160 which is the dimensions of this clip and the frame rate is 2997. That's automatically been set for us in the import. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a clone of this video. So right click, make clone layer, and we're going to drag it out into a new group. So then I want us to make another new group, object new group, and let's come over to the library and I want to import the generator called stripes, apply that, and also I want to grab cellular, bring that in as well, and I'm going to duplicate the cellular. So I'm going to set the blend mode of this top layer to lighten and then the cellular below that I'm going to set the blend mode to add. I'm going to come into stripes and we need some nice fine stripes so we'll set the size to 10. Then I'm going to come to this first cellular here, the one underneath, and I'm going to come to filters and distortion and I'm going to look for scrape and then you probably already see if I turn the stripes off you can see what's happening here. I'm actually turn this background video off so we can we can see everything that's happening here. So what we're going to do is going to move the center of that scrape down so we don't see that join there and we're going to have a y value of 10, negative 1080. You can see it's just moved it down to the bottom there and so now we're getting this sort of effect. So then with the top cellular I'm going to add a filter stylize and pixelate and I'm going to set the scale to 5. And what this is going to do is kind of give us a little bit of a broken up pixelation. You see that that's a nice smooth effect but this has got that broken up look to it. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to keyframe it so it's not there initially. So I'm going to come to one second on the timeline, come to its opacity, set that to zero, set a keyframe, come to the end of the project and set that opacity up to something like 60. So that'll just gradually introduce this sort of pixelation like that. So let's call this group displace and let's turn it off and let's turn back on our other two groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top group here, I'm going to set it to fixed resolution, I want to do the same with the displace group, come back to this group here and I'm going to add filters and distortion and bump map and I'm going to use the displace as the source. So for the bump direction let's have 180 and again we want to keyframe this amount value so I'm going to come to one second again on the timeline and I'll keyframe that amount and set it to zero, come to the end of the project and let's set that amount up to two and Hopefully you can see how this is starting to take shape. So we get these smooth streaks and then they get a little bit more sort of pixelated as it goes on like that. Now we don't actually want all of this to be distorted like that and that's why we've got these two layers here. So with this group selected I'm going to use the Bezier mask tool. Come down here, select the Bezier mask tool, zoom out a bit 
And I'm going to kind of draw from here to sort of roughly here and along here, because the river kind of bank is a little bit curved like that, and out here and out here like that. And then we want to invert that mask. And then just let's add some feather to that. And let's go for negative 250 for the feather. And that's kind of just blending more smoothly into the waterline there. So I think I will add an additional mask that just kind of removes the road from the effect as well. So let's come back to the beginning where we can actually see what we're doing. Select the group. Again, let's use the Bezier mask tool. So let's come down here. Just kind of roughly draw out where the road is, like so. And close it up. Check on the progress of that mask through the animation. That's pretty good. We might need to just sort of move it across a bit. So let's keyframe the control points at the first frame. Let's come to the last frame. And then let's just move those points like that a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be too accurate. I'm just going to help just isolate that. So what it's doing at the moment, it's adding in to the existing mask and we don't want that. We actually want it to subtract. So we're going to set the mask blend mode to subtract like that. And then we just need to, again, just soften it off. So let's go for a feather of negative 75. And that just kind of helps to give it a little bit more interest like that. So the other thing I want to do is I want to add to this group a little bit more styling. And I'm going to come to filters and glow and glint. Now the direction of the glint is wrong. So let's fix the angle first of all. Set that to 90. Let's have a glint size of 20 and a glint amount of 20. Really starting to look much more fantastical. And we also want to keyframe the intensity. So let's again come to one second. Let's set the intensity down to zero, keyframe it, come to the last frame, set the intensity up to 2.5. So now we're getting that. So there's another little effect that I want to create and I'm going to make another clone of the original image. So right click, make clone layer, and let's drag that out above our displaced group. And let's set the blend mode to lighten. And then what we're going to do is again come to one second on the timeline. And let's set a keyframe of the opacity at 100%. Let's come to the last frame and set the opacity down to zero. And this is going to just keep a little bit more of the original buildings during the transition. You can see how that's sort of filled it in a little bit more. It's just a little bit less sort of broken up at the beginning. And then gradually the, the breaking up takes over, but it just, just, just helps to fill it in, I think. I'd also like to add a lens flare. So I'm going to come over to the library, come down, grab the lens flare. I'm going to drag it in to a group above everything else we've done, apart from the displays there. And just let's turn on the overlays so we can see where its center is. Just want to move that center sort of to there, which doesn't have to be too precise, but might as well. And what we want to do is keyframe its intensity. So again, let's come to one second on the timeline. Let's uh, set its intensity down to zero, come to the last frame and set it all the way up to four. And we also want to have a size of 300. And maybe also let's just reduce the fall off a little bit. Let's go for maybe two, I think. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit more spread out and intense. So then let's give this a little bit of color correction. So I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to put everything into it. So object new group, select everything, put that into the new group. And let's come over and let's use some of these looks. So first of all, I'm going to select Noir. I'm going to stack them up and I'm going to select New York and I'm also going to select uh, Bleach. And together these create quite a nice look, but actually I'm going to just knock all of them back to about 50% like so, just so we're keeping a little bit of the original colour. And you could kind of colourise the end result. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So let's just finish off by having our sort of burnout at the end here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to filters and stylize, and I'm going to look for 
slit scan, which is not an effect one uses very often, but quite useful here. So I'm going to come to 720 on the timeline, and I'm going to keyframe the mix amount. I'm going to set that down to zero, and then come to the last frame and set that mix amount to 100. Now we don't want a horizontal burnout like this. Well, we might actually, uh, it's really up to you, but I think I'm going to go for a vertical one. So I'm going to have a rotation of 90 degrees. So it's like that. And actually maybe that final mix value should just be 90. So there's a little bit of something left there. The other thing I want to do is to add a bulge. So I'm going to come to filters and distortion and bulge. Again, let's come to 720. You can see how that bulge is actually quite, quite a nice effect there. It's kind of warping the reality. So I'm going to set the amount to 2000. And here at frame 720, I'm going to keyframe the scale and set the value to 1. And now 1 creates no distortion at all. And then if we come forward to the last frame and we set that to 0, you'll see how we get this sort of portal opening up effect. So that's quite nice like that. And we're going to add one more effect, and that's filters and blur and zoom blur. So again, come to frame 720, and let's keyframe the amount, set that to zero there, come to the last frame and set the amount to 32. And that'll just help to kind of give us that, that effect there. So if I to turn that on and off, you can see how that's working. Now what I might do is just put those three distortion effects down below the the grade, and I think that's going to look better. So there at the bottom, and then we've got our looks at the top like that. So we're actually grading through those effects. And really that's pretty much it. What I did in my example is I did a kind of rolling wave of something or other along the bottom of this, but it's just too complicated to explain in this tutorial. I might do a follow up if you're that interested, but I think it's a pretty nice effect as it is. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon.